हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namne Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter Number 12, The Killing of the Demon Agasura, Text Number 39. Sakritya Danga Pratimantarahita Mano mai bhagavatim tadogatim Sa eva nityatma sukhanu bhutyabhi Vyudasta mai ontar gato hikim puna Sakridya Danga Pratimantirahita Mano Mai Bhagavatim Dadogatim Sa Eva Nityatma Sukhanu Bhutyabhi Vyudasa mai ontar gato hi kimpuna Sakridya danga pratimantirahita Mano mai bhagavatim dadogatim Sa eva nityatma sukhanu bhutyabhi Vyudasa mayon targato hi kimpuna
yudasana yon yato kitkim puna Sacred, once only, yet whose Anga Pratima, the form of the Supreme Lord. There are many forms, but Krishna is the original form. Anta Ahita, placing within the core of the heart somehow or other. Manamai, thinking of him even by force. Bhagavatim, which is competent to offer devotional service to the Lord. Dadao, Krishna gave. Gatim, the best destination. Sa, he, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Eva, indeed. Nitya, always. Atma, of all living entities. Sukha Anubhuti, Anyone thinking of him immediately enjoys transcendental pleasure. Abhivyudashta maya. Because of illusion is completely removed, because all illusion is completely removed by him. Antagata, he is always present within the core of the heart. He, indeed, Kimpuna, what to speak. Translation, if even one, if, if even only once or even by force, one brings the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead into one's mind. One can attain the supreme salvation by the mercy of Krishna, as did Agasur. What then is to be said of those whose heart the Supreme Personality of Godhead enters when he appears as an incarnation? Or those who always think of the lotus feet of the Lord, who is the source of transcendental bliss for all living entities and by whom all illusion is completely removed. 
Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The process of receiving the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is described here. Yat, yat pada pankaja palasha vilasa pankya. Simply by thinking of Krishna, one can attain him very easily. Krishna is also described as having his lotus feet always within the hearts of the devotees. Bhagavan Bhakta Radhistita. In the case of Agasur, one may argue that he was not a devotee. The answer to this is that he thought of Krishna for a moment with devotion. Bhaktiaham ekaya graya. Without devotion, one cannot think of Krishna. And conversely, whenever one thinks of Krishna, one undoubtedly has devotion. Although Agasura's purpose was to kill Krishna, for a moment Agathu, Agasura thought of Krishna with devotion. And Krishna and his associates wanted to sport within Agasura's mouth. Similarly, Putana wanted to kill Krishna by poisoning him. But Krishna took her as his mother because he had, he had, he had accepted the milk of her breast. Swopam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bayat. Especially when Krishna appears as an avatar Anyone who thinks of Krishna in his different incarnations, Ramadi Murtishu Kala Niyame and especially in his original form as Krishna, attains salvation. There are many instances of this, and among them is Agasura, who attained the salvation of Sarupya Mukti. Therefore, the process is satatam kirtayanto mam yatantas jadradavrata. Those who are devotees always engage in glorifying Krishna. Advaita machuta manadi manantarupam. When we speak of Krishna, we refer to all his avatars, such as. Krishna, Govinda, Narayan, Vishnu, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna, Balaram, Shamsundar. One who always thinks of Krishna must attain Vimukti, special salvation, as the Lord's personal associate. Not necessarily in Vrindavan, but at least in Vaikuntha. This is, this is Sarupya Mukti. Oma Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Namo Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're hearing this amazing description of how Agasura 
who had come there to Vrindavan to kill Krishna and how he managed to get liberation, Swarupya Mukti, not just simply Sayujya Mukti. Usually demon killed by Krishna would get Sayujya Mukti. And that Sayujya Mukti is also very rare, very difficult to achieve. Great yogis, jnanis, they have to greatly endeavor to get Sayujya Mukti. But somehow this Agasura demon was able to achieve Swarupya Mukti. So it is described here that somehow he thought of Krishna with devotion. Just maybe for a moment. <laughs> now of course we should understand to think of Krishna at the time of death is not a very easy thing. If one has not practiced throughout the life, then one will not be able to think of Krishna. Because usually at the point of death, one will think of whatever he is, whatever has occupied his mind throughout his life. But somehow this Agasura demon was so fortunate that even though he was envious of Krishna, he was able to get Sarupya Mukti, could, that means liberation into Vaikuntha. Not Goloka, he didn't get the ultimate liberation, the highest liberation in, Vai, in Vaikuntha, uh, Goloka. But Vaikuntha, still very special liberation, very, very elevated position. So certainly Maharaj Yudhisthira, if he had heard about this, he would have been very surprised. Because in the seventh canto, you have Maharaj Yudhisthira, he witnessed the killing of Sishupala and he saw how Sishupala's soul came out of the body and entered into the effulgence of Krishna or entered into the body of Lord Krishna. So Maharaj Yudhisthira seeing Sishupal achieve that kind of liberation, he was, he was surprised. He thought, how? This Sishupao, he was so nasty, he was so envious of Krishna. It is said practically from the moment he took birth, Sishupao had the habit of criticizing and condemning and insulting Krishna. Right? He was, he was a relative of Krishna, he was the son of Damagosh. Damagosh is related to Krishna's family. So there were two brothers, Sishupal and Dantavarkra, and they both had the same habit. They, they both had this habit of being very envious, very critical and saying so many bad things. But somehow or other, although they were so, so offensive, Maharaj Yudhisthira said, somehow their tongue didn't get leprosy. You know, they said such, so many bad things, you would think their tongue would have got leprosy. It would have had white leprosy or something like that. But nothing happened. They remained, you know, healthy. They were not affected. And then he was, so he was surprised to see that, but he was even more surprised when he saw, when they were killed by Krishna, how their souls entered into Krishna, effulgence, and he, how they had achieved that liberation. So he brought this, this uh, point to Narada Muni to ask him why it was like this, how these people, because usually 
people who are envious of Krishna, they enter into the lowest species of life. In the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has described the demoniac nature. Tamaham dvishita kruran samsarishu naradama. Krishna says, those who are envious and mischievous and lowest of men, then they enter into the demoniac species of life and they repeatedly take birth in these species. And birth after birth, they appear in these demonic species and sink further and further into the darkest regions of existence. So, Maharaj Yudhisthira was thinking, how is it possible that Sishupal and Dantavarka, they didn't get reactions like that, but they were certainly envious. So then Narada Muni explains to Maharaj Yudhisthira how there are five different ways one can get the mercy of the Lord. Here, this we're hearing about how Agasura got the mercy of the Lord. In the seventh canto though, Maharaj Yudhisthira is describing Narada Muni is describing to Maharaj Yudhisthira that there are five different ways in which one can qualify for the Lord's mercy. One was the gopis by their lusty desires. Now the gopis, of course their lust is not like the lust of the material world. Because the gopis are all great devotees, that they're the greatest devotees of Krishna. They're all liberated souls. And by their lusty, but they had lusty desires for Krishna. And of course, why did they have lusty desires for Krishna? To give Krishna pleasure. Because that was pleasing to Krishna. And they're thinking they will do whatever Krishna wants. Whatever is pl will give him pleasure, the gopis are willing to do that. So their lusty desires are the lust of the spiritual world, not the lust of the material world. The lust of the material world is compared to iron. And the lust of the spiritual world is like gold. So the gopis, by their lusty desires, they achieve Krishna. And then Kamsa, by his fear. Kamsa was always fearful of Lord Krishna because at the time of the marriage of Vasudev and Devaki, it was predicted that the eighth child of Vasudev and Devaki will kill you. So from that time, Kamsa was always fearful that some, this child is going to come and kill me. So Kamsa was always absorbed in thought of Krishna. So this is the principle to get the mercy of Krishna. They have to, they have, they're thinking of him. And Kamsa was constantly thinking of Krishna. But he's thinking Krishna's going to come and kill me. So he's thinking how to kill Krishna. And of course he sent so many demons like Aga. You know, they were all friends of Kamsa. And Kamsa had sent them to go and kill all the children in Braja. So Kamsa was absorbed in fear and he got the mercy of Krishna and then Sishupal by his envy because Sishupal as we were saying from his very birth he was constantly envious and then Krishna also came and kidnapped Rukmini just before Sishupal could marry her 
So that didn't help matters. And then, it, and then there was the also Maharaj Yudhisthira's uh, Rajasuya sacrifice when they wanted to select someone who is the most worshipable person for everyone in this assembly. And then they suggested Krishna and Sishupal just blew his top. What? Krishna, because he's so envious of Krishna and he began to insult Krishna, how he's just a cowherd boy and, and he's, you know, he's a rast, you know, just in, so many insults. So it was then, at that time, Krishna threw the Surashan Chakra and cut off the head of Sishupal and the soul entered into Krishna. In front of everyone's eyes, everyone could see the soul come out from Sishupal's body and enter into Lord Krishna. Krishna arranges. Usually it's not perceivable, but Krishna arranges the inconceivable to be conceived by his mercy. So Sishupal, by his envy, achieved the mercy of the Lord. And then the Pandavas, by their filial relationship with Lord Krishna. No, not the Pandavas, the Yadus, the Yadu dynasty, by their filial relationship with Krishna. So they enjoyed that connection with Lord Krishna, so they could constantly think of Krishna. And of course, they were all living there in Dwarka with Krishna as well, and enjoying his association. So they were constantly in thought of Krishna. And then the Pandavas, by their affection for Krishna, because the Pandavas went through so many difficulties, but they always had that affection for Krishna, particularly Arjuna, who was a very intimate friend of Krishna. And that's why Krishna picked him to speak the Bhagavad Gita. But all the Pandavas had that affection, the friendly relationship with Krishna. And then Narada Muni says, and all the devotees, by their devotional service, then they also qualify for the mercy of Krishna. Because the devotees, by doing devotional service, they should also be thinking of Krishna, constantly thinking of Krishna. That is the real meaning of devotional service. Of course, the amazing thing, however, which Narada Muni says to Mah Maharaj Yudhisthira, is that he said that he, Narada Muni feels that one who is the enemy of Krishna is more absorbed in thought of Krishna than those who have, who, than those who are simply doing devotional service that those who are his enemies, their thought of Krishna is so intense that it's greater than the devotee who's doing just, just doing devotional service. So Narada Muni says, you know, wow, these demons, these enemies of Krishna, they're really fortunate because they're so absorbed in thought of Krishna. However, Prabhupada cautions us in the purport there that don't think you can imitate the demons, these demons. You know, like Haranyakashipu. Haranyakashipu was always, he was attached to his son, Prahlad. So he was thinking of Prahlad. So he, he got, by remembering Prahlad, he was liberated. Don't think we can imitate these kind of demons. In fact, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Because devotional service should be favorable to Krishna. Anukoyena Krishna nu shilanam, right? Devotional service must be favorable to Krishna. 
And it can be also any of Krishna's different, different avatars, incarnations, they're all in relationship to Krishna. Prabhupada quotes the Brahma Samhita, Ramadi Murtishu, Kala Niyamena Tishtam. All these different avatars, they're all Krishna appearing in different forms, in different pastimes, different circumstances. And if one can fix his mind on these different forms of the Lord, then that is the success of life. So we're told this Agasura, somehow he thought of Krishna just for a moment, with devotion anyway. Why did he have devotion? We, don't know, we can't understand. We have, at the same time we know all of these demons who were the friends of Kamsa, they're not ordinary souls because somehow they have come there and they're able to, they've been able to witness Lord Krishna's pastimes and to take part in the pastime of Krishna. This Agasura was such a great demon. By his power he could transform himself into this form of a snake. One yojana long eight miles long and we're we're told also how when he opened his mouth there was this very horrible smell coming from inside the intestines because snakes you know what did they eat well he'd been eating must have been eating other people just like Putana, his elder sister, right? Putana had been engaged in killing children also. Of course, it's pointed out that they didn't kill the, the children of the, the devotees. They just killed the children of the demons. <laughs> they were thinking they were killing the devotees. But the people they were killing were the children of the demons, not the children of the devotees. Because Kamsa was thinking, all the children born, one of them must be born to kill me. Go and kill all the children. So he sent demons like Putana and then Aga. They'd been killing so they were sinful. Now how could they do devotional service? Yesham twantagatam papam jananam punya karmana te danva moha nirmukta bhajanti mam dridavrata that only people who perform pious activities over many lifetimes and who are freed from the reactions of sins can engage in my devotional service. How did Agasura get this qualification? It's inconceivable. And it, we were told, Prabhupada says, that some, he thought of Krishna for a moment. Now, Gadvanga Maharaj also thought of Krishna for a moment. Right? Gatvanga Maharaj, he also had a moment that you have a... He was fighting. Gatvanga Maharaj had come to the higher planets to fight on behalf of the demigods against the demons. And the demigods were very much grateful to him. So they offered him a blessing. So Gatvanga Maharaj asked the demigods, just tell me, how long do I have left? How much more time do I have left in this material world or in this material body? And the demigods told him, you have one moment. So immediately Gadvanga Maharaj transported himself from the higher planets down to this earth planet. And he fixed his mind on the Lord and he gave up his body and went back to Godhead. 
He was very detached. He could do, but he only had a moment. He didn't get much time for preparation. But that's all it takes. One moment. You think of the Lord. But the difference is, Gadvanga Maharaj was a devotee. So for a devotee to think of the Lord, yeah, you can do it. But here's Agasura. Is Agasura a devotee? <laughs> well, certainly. He's not recognized as a devotee. He's the demon and he's the friend of Kamsa. But did Kamsa, Kamsa also got liberated, right? Kamsa also got liberated. We were discussing in another place I was talking. Somebody told me that Prabhupada, it's written there that Kamsa also got Sarupya Mukti. I thought he only got Sayujya Mukti, but it's described he also got Swarupya. So, so fortunate how these demons got so much good fortune because they were thinking of Krishna. So Agasura, he opens his mouth, the cowherd boys walk in and Lord Krishna, he didn't really want them to go in. He was like, prefer the, no, 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 don't go in, he's a, he's, a, he's a demon, he's not a devotee. This is not just some playground for you. This is some big demon come in disguise. But the cowherd boys, we, Krishna did, thought, don't go, don't go, but they, they'd already gone in. How is it the cowherd boys can overrule Krishna's desire. Krishna is the supreme controller. Krishna, you know, we, we are the servants of the duty of the devotee is to serve Krishna. How is it the coward boys could go in there? Is it Krishna is controlled by the desire of his devotees. Krishna is sub subservient to his devotee's desire. What the devotees want, Krishna, okay. So the cowherd boys had gone in and then the demons waiting, Agasura is waiting because he wants Krishna. So he must have been thinking of Krishna definitely at that time because he was thinking, I don't just want the cowherd boys, I've got, I want Krishna because it was Krishna who killed my sister. It was Krishna who killed my brother, Baka. I want Krishna. So he's thinking of Krishna. And somehow there's some devotion there. And Krishna goes in to the mouth. Maybe, maybe, I don't know how, how, how does Agasura have the devotion for Krishna? I don't know. How, how it could happen that he has this devotion? For, but not for very long, but just for a moment. And so Krishna goes in his mouth, and then Agasura closes the mouth, and then Krishna expands himself. And then the other pastimes, Krishna, you know, like Damodar Lila, or Bakasura, or Trinavarta, Sakasura, Saktasura, Krishna is still a child, but he, 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 he kills the demons in his child, in his baby form, in his little child form. But for Agasura, Krishna has to kill him the more conventional way. He just expands himself, makes himself huge, blows up, and then blows up the insides of Aga. And then his life air goes out the top of the head, out of the, what's that place called? The Brahmarandra. Uh, Brahmarandra. So that Prabhupada writes, when, when there's a hole in the head and you see the soul has gone out the top of the head, he said, that's a sign of a great yogi. So Agasura, you know, his soul went out the top of the head. So that is an indication 
of his very elevated position by the arrangement of Lord Krishna. So, we're seeing how merciful Lord Krishna is that he can deliver even these demons because they're thinking of him. So, Sukadeva Goswami is describing to Maharaj Parikshit, just think how fortunate a devotee is that if they hold the lotus feet of the Lord in their heart, or if they keep the Lord in their heart. And certainly, the Lord is in the heart of the devotees. Then there's so much more fortune, they'll get an even better destination than Agasura. Agasura, he could get Swarupya Mukti, he could go to Vaikuntha. But the devotees of the Lord, they're even more fortunate. They can go to the Supreme Abode, they can go to Goloka, they can enjoy the Braja, the pastimes of Vrindavan with Krishna. So, we want to understand the importance of thinking of the Lord, remembering Him. And Prabhupada gives us the formula how to think of Krishna. Satayam kirtayantomam yatantas jadradavrata. Always chanting, uh, oh, always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination. These great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. So this is devotee. Right? Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivim Prakriti Mashrata Bhajanti Ananya Manaso Gyadva Bhutadim Avyayam These great souls are under the protection of my divine energy. They are fully engaged in my devotional service. So this is the, the method by which we can think of Krishna. We chant his name we worship his deity, we hear his pastimes, and in this way our mind will become more and more absorbed in thought of Krishna. Lila Smaranam, right? This is the business of devotees. Every day we read the Srimad Bhagavatam and we get an opportunity to reflect more on the pastimes of Lord Krishna. How Lord Krishna performed these wonderful pastimes in Braja. How he liberated these demons. Who, the, at least these souls who appeared in demonic bodies. How he liberated them to the spiritual world. So, uh, Prabhupada mentions uh, different personalities, uh, different forms of the Lord. We, he says, uh, when we speak of Krishna, we refer to all his avatars. And then he says, Krishna, Narayan, Vishnu, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Balaram, Shamsundar. <laughs> it's, all, it's all Krishna, right? Krishna Balaram, Shamsundar. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya, Govinda. <laughs> he, he didn't go, Prabhupada didn't go far away from uh, Lord, Lord Krishna. <laughs> he wants us to think of Krishna. Think of Krishna. And he says, you get vimukti. You get a very special liberation. Not just mukti, but vimukti. Very special liberation. And, but he, he says, Special liberation as the Lord's personal associate. But then he says, not necessarily in Vrindavan. And so at least Agasura, he didn't get to Vrindavan. But we don't mind. Vaikuntha is also, must be <laughs> very blissful, very wonderful to be there in Vaikuntha. 
Okay, we got any questions? Yeah, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a wonderful class. In fact, hearing you speak on the Bhagavatam, it clicked for me. I understood this quandrum. He's not a devotee, but he had devotion. And thus thought of Krishna. Prabhupada in the purport says, yeah. if you don't have devotion, you can't think of Krishna. So to have thought of him, you had to have... So that's where his devotion came from. But I, I, this is the point that I want to make, that I couldn't understand this reading it myself, but hearing you speak on the Bhagavatam, it came to me. Using the examples from Narda Muni and the same principles given in the 10th canto with the gopis, I think, uh, chapter 49, where it talks about friendship, affection, fear, anger, like that. So Kamsa was Krishna conscious, but he was unfavorably Krishna conscious. He was a demon, but he was always thinking of Krishna. That thinking of Krishna is a form of devotion. It's just not pure devotional service, and it's not favorable devotional service. So Agasura was unfavorably absorbed in thought of Krishna, at least for a moment. You got to realize at that moment when you swallowed him, and oh my God, he's expanding, expanding. He had the understanding, oh my goodness, this is God. It has to be God. And it's the same principle with Sishupala. It's mentioned in Lagu Bhagavatam Rita by Rupa Goswami. Hiranyakashipu, because he didn't realize that Nishingadev, this half man, half man, half lion form was God, his next birth he took birth as Ravana and had more opulences than Indra himself. Super, super birth. And then when he was killed by Ram, he still didn't understand that Ram was God. He just thought this is an extraordinarily powerful human. And because of that, he had to take birth again. But it stated that Shishu Paul was incredibly wealthy. I mean, his birth is Shishu Paul, the son of, you said, what was his father's name? Shishu Paul. Damagosh. Damagosh. And I guess, you know, incredible birth is what Rupa Goswami says. And then when that Sudarshan Chakra was coming to cut off his head, his seeing that Sudarshan Chakra come in that last moment, he realized, oh my God, Krishna is God. And because of that, that's where he got the Vimukti. He got liberated going back to Vaikuntha. Of course, it's Jai Vijay Lila, but that was the qualification, Rupa Goswami says. Two things. Krishna is the most merciful form of the Lord. We're not talking about Lord Chaitanya here, but other than the other avatars of the Lord, and he's quoting, uh, referring to Ram and Nishinga. Krishna specifically, there's perfection in his mercy, Shakti, so that he can so easily give liberation to these demons. So the devotion wasn't favorable. That's what I wanted to ex uh, emphasize. It wasn't favorable, but it's considered devotion because he was absorbed angrily uh -huh. in thinking of Krishna. And that's no, like Vain is the example in that seventh canto purport you refer to. He was always cursing God. He didn't believe in Vishnu. He thought he was Vishnu. But because he wasn't meditating on the form and the person of the Lord, just the concept of God, like all these foolish atheists of the day, they don't get this good fortune because they're not absorbed in thought of the Lord, the person, the Adi Purusha. So anyway, thank you for a wonderful class. I hope that... Yeah, thank you very much. Very nice points. Yeah, important. And so I'm appreciating that, as Prabhupada had said in the purport, thinking of Krishna means there must be devotion. But Prabhu points out that the devotion can be unfavorable devotion. <laughs> Not favorable devotion, but unfavorable devotion. <laughs> Question from online, from Sita Ladevi Dasi. A most respectful obeisances to Nishinha Mahar's lotus feet. Thank you for your most excellent class. Only by thinking of Krishna then we can attain him. But during the process of our practicing Krishna consciousness, there are a lot of people, they join in, uh, but we see even some advanced devotees, they left Krishna consciousness movement. How can they leave Krishna consciousness? Now how can we become always 
dedicated ourselves to the instructions of Guru and Krishna and keep our steady practice. Thank you. Well, you should understand advanced devotees don't leave Krishna consciousness. You're, what she's thinking, somebody is advanced just because they've been around a long time. They may have been around in the Krishna consciousness movement for some time, but that doesn't make them advanced. We have to look at their spiritual qualification. We have to look at their practice and how they, the standards they follow. Then we can understand how much they're advanced or not. Someone, somebody's leaving Krishna consciousness means they're not practicing very well, means they're not very fit, steady and they're not keeping the principles very closely, they're not attentive to spiritual practice, they're not hearing regularly. If they were doing these things, they would never leave. People only leave because their material desires, they're not able to put aside their material desires. But if they were fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, they would never give up Krishna consciousness. So people who leave Krishna consciousness indicates they're having spiritual problems. It means they're not doing everything they should be doing to keep up their devotional. So, she wants to know how to stay in Krishna consciousness. So what you have to do to stay aboard, you have to have strong association. You have to, somebody pull your ear, just like a teacher will pull the ear of the child. When the child is a rascal, when the child misbehaves, then the teacher may pull the ear of the child to get the child to behave properly. So you need somebody to pull your ear, to keep you in line, so that you don't go off, so that you, you, you need somebody who's going to keep you on track, keep you steady and make you humble. You need that kind of association to keep yourself alive in Krishna consciousness. And if you have that kind of association, then you won't give up Krishna consciousness. By? By offenses. Oh, okay. Prabhu is saying that we can also be put out of Krishna consciousness if we commit offenses against the movement or against devotees, if we go against, if we, we, we commit some offense against them, we say improper, use improper words and do things improperly. So, we have to learn to cultivate humility and we have to think of ourselves lower than the straw in the street because we're proud, we think we're important, we think we have some big position, we think we have some standing in society and we want to be respected. But Lord Chaitanya teaches us to offer all respect to others. Amanina manadena means to offer respect to others, to give respect and not to be anxious to get respect for yourself. So this is very important to remember Lord Chaitanya's teaching in the third verse of Shikshastikam and that will keep you strong in Krishna consciousness. Last question from Subudi Rai Das, obeisances to Guru Maharaj. In one article by Ayindra, I saw, Bhaktivinoda Thakur therefore claims a pure devotee should not participate in the kirtan led by those who are offending the holy names. So who are those offenders? Maybe the people who are hiding their motivation and to perform kirtan 
simply for money or to increase their sexual attraction or for reputation. And they are, for this purpose, they are chanting. But such chanting can only bring material sense enjoyment. How can we properly understand this paragraph and how can we practice it? Okay, well, that's a very important point that the chanting must be pure. You're going to chant the holy name, it must be done with pure devotion. And then it will have the proper potency. But if we become a professional kirtanir, just simply performing for, the, for some material motive, then it's not pure chanting. So Prabhupada was very cautious about these things. I remember one time here in Mayapur, Janari Vas Prabhu, maybe you remember, there was a, a kirtan competition and different kirtan groups came to perform and who, you know, to be, and there was judging who's to be, who was the best kirtan and they would, they would do kirtan and dance and like this. But Prabhupada stopped it all. He said, this is all nonsense. He said, this is not pure chanting. He wanted us all just to chant with love and devotion for the pleasure of Krishna. Not to be the best, not to win a competition. He wanted us to chant as devotional service. Devo devotional service means Anya Bilasita Sunyam Jnana Karma Janavritam Anukhuyena Krishna no Shilanam Bhaktir Uttamam. The highest devotion is that devotion which is rendered without desire for any fruit of gain or philosophical speculation and it's should be favorable to Krishna and it should be rendered constantly. So, yes, if one is simply performing kirtan like some professional musician, this is not pure devotion. And if, then there's also the problem with the opposite sex, that young women come and they like all the kirtaniers. And so this these kind of problems are there in kirtan. So kirtan has to be performed in a very serious mood. A very, you have to be very conscious, trying to please Krishna. Love and devotion is the qualification. You know, okay, somebody, they spend hours and hours lessons, to play harmonium, to play madanga, and to play kartals, everything very perfectly, have everything very perfectly, make a very beautiful sound, but there must also be pure devotion. There must be the real mood of devotion there. It's very nice, you can play very, you play very well, that's good. Prabhupada also liked to hear the devotees play instruments properly. But the mood must also be very carefully controlled to be done for the pleasure of Krishna. What do you say, Prabhu? Janani Vas. Comment. The chanting is the main thing. <clears throat> it's the chanting that reveals the holy name, or the presence of the holy name. And then it's the holy name reveals the form of the Lord, and the holy name reveals the qualities of the Lord, and the holy name will reveal the, the Alila. It's the progression. So in the beginning, purity has to be there for any of these realizations. But when we can't chant purely, then we will feel the presence of the Lord. That will be the beginning of pure chanting. Thank you. 
It really is a razor's edge, isn't it, Maharaj? Because the devotees who take the time to learn the expertise in playing the instruments and learning the control of the, uh, the, vo the vocal cords and singing, etc., uh, they will say that, it, that Krishna likes the best. The best should be offered to Krishna. But you're making the most important what Krishna is looking most important point what Krishna is looking for is the bhakti, the desire to please him. And no matter how expert you may be, if that's missing, then there's no spiritual benefit. There'll be material byproducts. I like to say the chump change of the holy name. You can get your sense gratification, you can get liberation, you're not going to get the even what Agasura got in this pastime. Uh, and then the other thought that comes to my mind is all these instruments in the, all the kirtan melas, they have all these instruments playing and even they stop the chanting of the mantra to let somebody play a saxophone or a violin or something like that. And I just have a, I have my hesitation whether or not Srila Prabhupada would approve of that. I really do and I hope I'm not stepping on toes because they will quote one quote where Prabhupada said, for enticing the public, one can do this. But most of the kirtan melas aren't the public, they're the in-house devotees. And so I really wonder whether or not Srila Prabhupada would be pleased with taking the... In fact, I'll say it equivocally, I, I, I'm convinced he would not like it, and I'll use the example. You remember uh, Sad Goswami Astikam on the album that had the sitar playing, the sitar accompaniment to Srila Prabhupada singing the Sadhu Swami Asakam. You remember that? Bhajan that Prabhupada sang? Anyway, it's recorded. I bought it as an LP album when I was becoming a devotee. And then I later heard that Srila Prabhupada didn't like the sitar accompaniment on the recording. It was, it was dubbed over Srila Prabhupada's chanting by a devotee. And he said, this will distract them from, the, from hearing the, the, the sound vibration of the glorification of the six Goswamis. Mm -hmm. Now that's a pretty strong reference to show Prabhupada didn't like distraction of music, very nicely played musical instruments uh, along with the chanting. So anyway, I'm just putting it out there. Anyone hearing, they had to contemplate these things for themselves and, and introspectively look at their own motives. But it all goes back for us, what will please Prabhupada? If we stay to his standards, we know then Krishna will be pleased. Mm. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gaur Premanande.